And we are live. Hello and welcome everyone to today's Circuit Stream Workshop, Introduction to HoloLens 2 AR Development with Unity. I'm your host, Brendan, and shortly we'll be joined by our instructor for today, Indika Wajisuria. Uh, before we get into it, I wanted to do a quick audio video check uh, for everyone in our audience today. If you could let me know, you can hear me and see me, it would be greatly appreciated. Jackie can hear, perfect. Richard, perfect. Okay, beautiful, awesome. Um, also wanna provide a quick overview of your layout here. So what you see in front of you uh, on your right hand side, you'll see your, your chat. Feel free to engage other members of the audience as well as some of our team members here. Uh, Dayan is here to, uh, to mingle a little bit. Uh, if you have questions throughout the workshop, I'll direct you to the questions tab. We are going to do a Q&A at the end of the session, so uh, definitely post your questions there so that we know to come back to them. We'll also be doing a, a few polls, so just to kind of gauge your experience as well as get some feedback from the audience, uh, I may post polls uh, from time to time. Feel free to engage in those. They would uh, certainly help us out. Lastly, just want to mention, you know, at the at the top right of uh, the presentation screen is a little bell button. So if you uh, if you notice that the notifications popping up on your screen are a little distracting, feel free to just uh, click that bell button and it'll it'll shut them off for you. Uh, so I'm your host. I'm hosting from Toronto, Canada today. Uh, very interested to know uh, where everyone is joining us from, where around the world. Uh, feel free to post it in the chat. Would love to uh, to know where everyone's joining us from. Greetings from Singapore. Awesome. Canberra, Australia. Richard, Calgary, Dayan, nice. Okay. Uh, Abby, the UK. Akeen, Sydney. Uh, perfect. Okay. So, so great kind of coverage all over the world. Lovely. Uh, welcome again. And, uh, and we're, we're certainly happy to have you here. Um, for those of you abroad who can't necessarily make it to the uh, to the live, you know, workshop, we are going to be recording this and sending it shortly after we conclude today. So don't worry too much. Um, you know, you'll get the replay. You'll get the uh, the resources uh, after. When you are ready to start uh, implementing this, you know, while we're watching live, I definitely recommend getting cozy, focusing on digesting the information that uh, that Indica is going to be sharing with you today. Take notes when you have questions, post them in the questions tab so that we can get back to you. Uh, and then when you're ready to start actually implementing some of this information, leverage the replay, you know, um, take the time today to, to think about questions, to, to be curious and to just digest information. Once you're ready to get hands on with it, leverage the replay and then you can go at your own pace. And, and that's definitely kind of the recommendation there. Um, so today our agenda is going to look like, I'm going to talk your ear off for five to 10 minutes uh, doing some introductions. Um, I'll pass it off to Indica, who's going to do the HoloLens 2 and AR deep dive. Uh, should take about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, I'll hop back on and do a wrap up and share some, some more information with you for about five to 10 minutes. And then we'll get into the live Q&A questions. Uh, so depending on how many questions we, we got today, depending on how curious the audience is today, uh, it should be about 15 to 30 minutes. Um, again, just to, just to reiterate, recordings will be sent afterwards as well as project files and resources. And I know Indica's got some great ones for you today. Um, so first of all, who am I? My name is Brendan Gilbert. I'm part of the education team here at CircuitStream. Uh, I actually have a background in investment management and banking for the past five years. Saw the way this industry is, is really blowing up and, and, and getting big uh, and had to be a part of it. Uh, and CircuitStream is certainly a, a great, uh, great place to get involved. Um, fun fact, I play competitive rugby still. Um, some, some of the Aussies in the crowd. Um, hopefully, you know you uh, you are also enthusiasts. My claim to fame is that I've never broken a bone playing that um, absolutely barbaric sport. Um, your instructor for today is going to be Indica Wajisuria. He is an instructor and VR AR developer with CircuitStream. Uh, he has been a developer for over five years and has worked on projects, uh, VR projects relating to marketing, historical visualizations, industrial applications, and everyone's favorite, probably VR games. Uh, he loves getting lost in long conversations, especially if it pertains to tech. Rugby equals footy. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, we call it rugby over here. My bad. Um, but yeah, 
please feel free to uh, to engage today. And uh, Indica is definitely a good guy to have a conversation with. Uh, more about Circuit Stream. So we were formed in 2015 when we identified a demand for education in the growing XR industry. Uh, we have team members and instructors all over the world. Um, we're a global team of industry experts, and we're passionate about building as well as teaching how to build AR and VR experiences and applications. Um, we focus on educating, uh, consulting, and we also have an enterprise platform for some of our um, uh, partners. CircuitStream is a Unity channel partner uh, as well. Uh, we have you know, a number of instructors. All of our instructors actually are Unity certified. So um, they also have a combined decades of experience in XR development. So you're getting great information from, from very knowledgeable instructors. Some of the people we've worked with in the past, or organizations rather, um, Walmart, Lockheed Martin, the US Navy, Nike, Hershey's, you know, a lot of, a lot of well-known known companies um, send their employees to actually go through our training programs and courses. Uh, and that's because they've identified that, that XR is, is a, definitely a growing industry. Uh, some of our academic offerings uh, include both long and short courses. Uh, some of our kind of flagship courses are XR development with Unity. Uh, it's 10 weeks long, a beginner friendly course, and it basically is going to teach you the fundamentals of C Sharp, you know, development in the Unity engine uh, and as it pertains to uh, XR. We also have an XR project accelerator for those who are more intermediate or expert level. Um, this is a way you can leverage, you know, additional resources, additional support of our instructors, uh, and and apply it very much to a capstone project that you're working on, um, and also, you know, pick up additional information and great experience with Unity. We also offer one-on-one -on -one support, so. Uh, we also offer this in, in our courses, but if you are looking to, you know, get a little bit of support and mentorship in, in any spe specific area of XR development, you know, you can certainly leverage one-on-one -on -one support that we offer uh, with our instructors. We also offer team training. So with many of our, uh, with many of the companies that we worked with in the past, um, team training, we do, you know, groups of five and up, uh, we can develop a curriculum tailored to what your group or company uh, is looking to create or build. And then we deliver uh, that course to you over, you know, a two to three week period as almost a boot camp style uh, training regime. Um, but that's just a little bit about us and what we offer here at CircuitStream. Uh, what are we going to be learning today? Uh, so today we'll, we'll be learning how to set up an AR project in Unity, uh, how to go about designing an AR workflow in Unity, using different APKs with Unity, including HoloLens 2 emulator, uh, and how maintenance engineers and field technicians uh, and educators can develop similar AR business applications. Um, so today we'll be we'll be focusing on doing that in the Unity engine, uh, and I want to want to kind of have my first poll here. Um, on a scale of zero to 10, you know, how much Unity experience uh, do you have? Uh, please feel free to, uh, to share. I'll post this right here. Um, so check the polls tab uh, and, you know, zero being, you know, no experience at all. 10 being your, you know, a Jedi Grandmaster, your Yoda of Unity. Um, love to know uh, what kind of experience you guys have with the engine so far. One or two, four. Okay, so a couple of uh, couple of beginners, and then and then some some intermediate levels. That's perfect, perfect for anyone who's really you know not that familiar with Unity. Uh, what it is is a free three D development engine for building games, simulations, and experiences. Uh, definitely the easiest way to begin making apps for XR. Uh, and I keep saying XR, but want to make sure everyone's aware of, of XR. It's basically an umbrella term, extended reality. Uh, and that term kind of encompasses you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, as well as mixed reality. So in terms of how you would go about creating any kind of application or experience, well, it all starts with you. You bring an idea to the table. You can bring that idea into Unity and start building you know, a more tangible uh, set of assets or, or uh, functions. And then 
what you would do is basically apply SDKs uh, to bring your app or experience to your preferred device, such as iOS, you know, such as uh, Google Phone, HoloLens, and Magic Leap. You know, today, obviously, we're going to be focusing on the HoloLens. Um, so what I'll do right now is invite Indica on, on stage. Uh, and then just as a reminder, you know, his presentation is going to be about 30 to 45 minutes. All will be recorded and sent out afterwards. Questions, I will definitely uh, ask that you post in the questions tab so that we know to, to you know, go back to them during the Q&A. Um, and then otherwise, sit back, relax, soak up all the information. You know, Indica's got a lot of it to share, so he's excited too, I'm sure. Uh, and without further ado, um, Indica, welcome, welcome to the stage. Amazing, amazing. Uh, so a very good morning, good evening, you know, good late night from wherever you're joining around the world. And thank you very much for joining with us. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, before starting, um, uh, am I audible enough for you? And can you see my face? <laughs> just to just to have an AV check. You're good on my end, and I will hop off yeah. to make sure you get all the attention. Okay. Yep. Let me share my screen here. All right. Cool. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Awesome. So, um, yeah, so what we're going to do today is to, you know, uh, give a little bit of an introduction to the HoloLens 2, uh, the HoloLens platform, and also to build an application uh, to the HoloLens uh, using the Unity engine. And so fear not, you don't need to have a HoloLens to build applications to Unity at the moment. But if you have a HoloLens, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a massive, uh, uh, you know, upward for whatever the thing that you're doing. Anyway, so we are gonna use the HoloLens emulator at the very end. But you know, just just as a start, we're gonna give uh, some introduction to the HoloLens. How uh, you know how about designing uh, the application to HoloLens, right? All right, so the, so the first thing that you should understand when it comes to the HoloLens is that the HoloLens itself is a different kind of a beast, right? So we have seen a lot of different types of beasts, right? Uh, some of them are like very, um, uh, very natural to us and some of them are like not, right? So, so what, what are these beasts, right? PCM Mac. Right, so if you are a software engineer or if you are a game designer or if, you know if you're building you know various different applications using unity or unreal or whatever the engine you know the pc and mac have like you know uh, some known inputs and outputs like you have the, the the screen you have the inputs such as the mouse or the keyboard um you know all these inputs are like very very similar to you you have you've been using this for all you know more than a decade sometimes and then we have another beast, another set of beasts called, you know, the Androids and iPhones, right? You know, both of them are like, you know, rivals, but they are like pretty much identical to each other. They have their own screens. Uh, you know, iPhone ha used to have a single button, but, you know, they kind of removed it. So it's like, you know, uh, uh, the universal fact is the touch screen, you know, the input and, and the output both together. And then we have some, you know, custom, app, custom. How do you put it? Custom hardware such as Amazon Alexa and Apple Watch, you know, which has their own separate interfaces. So when we talk about the Hololens, it's a, you know, it's a tremendously different beast, right? We haven't seen uh, what sort of a de device this is. That is, you know, uh, we we don't have much experience in using this, you know. But when you when you see the Hololens, you you just see the you just see the head mounted display, and not, you know, you know, you don't have that much of experience with the sensors or how you know how about going to uh, you know design this, uh, design any uh, application to the uh, to the Hololens. What are the sensors that you're going to use? So, so. So the, the, the HoloLens kind of like has these various differences. 
So we, what we want to do is we have to like respect these differences, you know, what are the outputs and inputs, and we are going to want to leverage these differences, right? So when you are working on the device, uh, one, of the, one of the most important things that you have to do is even uh, if you have the device with you, you have to test on the device regularly. So whatever the application, whatever the system that you're building, uh, you have to, uh, you know, you have to iteratively build, you know, it's, it's going to be a tremendous uh, work uh, because whatever the, whatever the thing that you develop, it should be like, it should be user friendly. It should, um, it should work the way uh, that you expect uh, to work, right? And it should not like confuse any of the users. Um, so such like that, you know, when we are designing everything, when you're, when you're designing our own application, it's gonna, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a tremendous task. So, um, so this one, uh, you know, when it comes to Unity and when it comes to Microsoft, um, they have made this, uh, this process a little bit easier for the, for the developers, right? So when you're, when you're developing these uh, uh, applications to the Hololens, uh, you can use the Unity editor to test the basic features of the, uh, of the application that you're building. And then you can put this into something called the HoloLens emulator, right? So the HoloLens emulator is kind of a kind of a platform that you can run on your own device on on Windows PC. Um, so it's kind of it's the, it's the same thing. It's the same interface that you see on the uh, um, on the actual HoloLens, but but it has its own. Uh, downsides, right? You can't see, you can't actually visualize, you can't put uh, an emulator on your head, right? It's gonna, <laughs> um, uh, it's, you know, do you wanna like, you know, wear your laptop on your head? No, can't do that. So to, to, to get the actual look and feel, you really have to have the device. Um, so, but but you, can, you can create your own pipeline, right? So you can build, you can test on the uh, on the editor. You can put it on the emulator to test some of the basic features, and then you can like deploy everything to the uh, to an actual Hololens. So when it comes to the Hololens, it's all about sensors, right? So you know the the hardware itself is just the head-mounted display, right? It it doesn't have any controllers, right? You have seen you know uh, all these VR devices like Oculus Quest, HTC Vive. Um, you know, even even the uh, even the mobile augmented reality, right? You have the touch screen so that you can like, you know, tap on a button uh, and you can activate something. Uh, but in Hololens, you don't have that, right? You just have the head mounted display, and you're gonna have to use some other types of sensors, right? So, any of you have any idea about the sensors that we are using in the Hololens? Just a quick question to see whether you guys are not you guys are awake with me. Yeah, there we go. We have to start with the hands, right? So the Hololens it uses various different uh, sensors, you know, infrared sensors, a camera, and all of different you know a depth sensor to 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 define the the location and the orientation of your hands, and it uses these hands to um to work as a sensor to to do all the interactions right inside the inside the the head mounted display but apart from that you know when we are when we are designing our applications to to match the universal design concept if you have heard of the universal design uh it kind of gives the idea that you have to design uh, uh whatever the application that you design to to um uh it can it should be usable by anybody even even without hands right so there we go uh hololens can also be used hands free just imagine that you are um uh, a maintenance worker kind of like the thing that we are going to build today right so just imagine that you are you are a maintenance worker and then you have like you know tools you have various different tools with your hands but you cannot like now that you're wearing the hololens with the tools, now you don't have your hands, right, uh, to, to interact with the HoloLens. So uh, the HoloLens platform has like provided some other uh, uh, sensors, such as the, the microphone. So you can just say adjust, and this button will automatically be triggered. 
So such so like that. Uh, we should leverage all of these, you know, different types of sensors to, you know, uh, just as Brandon mentioned, well, whatever the thing that we are going to build, it has to come from, come within ourselves, right? You know, the, the, the big yellow light bulb, right? It has to, it has to come from us. So whenever we are using these um, sensors to provide an interaction to the device, uh, we are going to want to um, build something in a way that it gives the feedback to the user who's building, uh, who's, who's using this application, right? For example, just imagine uh, you're playing a game, right? And you're kind of, um, uh, just imagine that you're playing a shooting game and then uh, you have this, you know, whatever the rectangle in the middle and then you start shooting and it doesn't give you uh, a sound effect, right? It doesn't it doesn't actually give you uh, a shooting sound, or it doesn't like show this, you know, uh, the 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 spark the spark effect. You know, you cannot see whatever the animations. So it's gonna it's gonna feel dumb, right? So whatever the thing, you know, when when it comes to you know not just this, but it, you know, also in game development, in all of these like VR AR applications and software development. For, you know, most most importantly, front end, right? Front end development as a whole has this idea of UI feedback overload, right? So as you can see here, right? So so there you can see when you know when this hand is like you know grabbing this uh, this 3D object of the Earth, you can actually see that you know it it, it gives you the feeling that um, this Earth object follows wherever your hand is right and when you you know when you when you take your hand closer to whatever the 3d object it kind of lights up so that you know that you're going to interact with this object right same goes with the buttons um, and and that is that is what uh, you know that is what make this uh, this hololens and the uh, uh, the hololens development platform so perfect because they have provided the basic features such like this so that we can we can use them to create our own applications right so uh, you should you should know that this hololens device is uh, is not a tethered device right it doesn't uh, it doesn't have any wires that goes into your pc or you know something you can you can use it uh, you know, uh, without without being tethered to another device, right? Fully uh, uh, standalone, and being standalone and being running on a battery, it uh, it doesn't. Uh, you know, we we kind of make sure that it runs on the full performance, right? Um, so it's it's a mobile device, and uh, there are certain things that you cannot do. You know, there are certain processes that the Hololens cannot uh, uh, cannot do. On the device itself, so there we have uh, uh, something called cloud rendering, where we do all this rendering, the three D, three uh, D animations, three D objects, and everything in the cloud, and we kind of stream uh, that into the device. So if you have, if you are a fan of uh, you know Xbox uh, Game Pass or maybe Nvidia Now, you know. Uh, you can play the games without a ha uh, actually having a device, right? You can just stream whatever the games that you play, uh, you know, Google Stadia. So such like that, all the cloud, all the uh, 3D rendering, everything will be done on the cloud and you'll, you'll be just, you know, streaming a video. And that video will uh, will leverage the uh, the spatial awareness of the, uh, of the HoloLens um, device and uh, will give you a seamless experience, uh, you know, uh, which is similar to the one that you are building, you know, the one that's running in the device itself. Apart from that, we have, you know, we can use some other services like maps integration, real-time translation. Just imagine you are building an application uh, that automatically captures whatever you see, um, uh, you know, whatever the text object that you see in the actual world, and it automatically translates and replaces that content. Uh, so you can do that using cloud services. And also data service visualization. So the the the, the software that you use, that you build, uh, it can it can talk to you know different APIs, different uh, different services, and pull down information, and can visualize this information real time uh, in this 3D world. All right. So I think I have given a very basic introduction to uh, you know going about designing. Uh, an application to the HoloLens. So the plan for today 
is to give you an idea of installing all the required software and tools uh, to build an application to the HoloLens. And then we're going to set up a Unity scene to work with the HoloLens 2. Right? And then we're going to talk about the solution that we are going to build. right? And then we're going to build it, and we're going to deploy and test. Right? So I'm not going to deploy it on, an, uh, on a real HoloLens device. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, where I am living, it's, uh, it's super hard to come by um, a, a HoloLens. Um, so I'm going to use the HoloLens emulator. But if you have a HoloLens with you, you're one of those lucky people. You can, you know, after the session, you can just follow along with the, with the video, can deploy and test it on your own device. Cool. Right, so the motivation of today's uh, workshop is uh, if, you, if you search for some of the applications that, uh, uh, that, are being that, are, that are using the HoloLens platform, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the major applications that you come across is the maintenance field, right? How about, you know, uh, imagine that you are a trainer, you're gonna train like 100 students and you, you're gonna have to do it individually. Right, it's gonna be a hassle. It's gonna take a lot of time of you. It's gonna take a lot of time of the students or you know, or the trainees. Uh, but you can, but you can, if but you know, just just imagine that if you can build a software that automatically, you know, that that guides the trainees of doing wh whatever the maintenance work, such like this, and maybe at the same time, you know. Uh, have a checklist uh, and also like pull down some informations like you know temperature or whatever the whatever the sensor values and sort of give some sort of insights right uh, it's gonna it's gonna you know it's gonna save you a lot in terms of your time and money and your effort right so we're gonna take this motivation and we're gonna build a very simple uh, application which is similar to this cool right so the plan Again, the plan for today. So this should not be the plan for today. This should be uh, the tools that we are going to install. Um, all right. So when uh, to to build Hololens applications, you're going to have to use a Windows 10 installed device. You're going to have to use a PC. Uh, if you are a Mac user, I'm really sorry to say this is one of those times that you have to use a Windows uh, device to build something to build something uh, to a Microsoft platform, right? So you have to use Windows 10, you have to use a PC, and you have to install Unity 2019 LTS version. If, you've heard, if you haven't heard of LTS, this is the long-term support version, right? So in, in this demo, I'm going to use 2019.4.20. You can use Unity 2020. Uh, but uh, the 2020 LTS version and you know the uh, the Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit that uh, comes with it, uh, it's um, uh, is it because HoloLens use two uses Azure Cloud Services? Of course, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, you know, when it comes to Microsoft Azure, uh, HoloLens, all of this kind of like you know is. Um, are children of the same mother, which is the Microsoft, right? So, you know, talking about the the, the cloud services, we can use Azure Cloud Services to all, do all this cloud rendering and all this data service visualization, stuff like that. Cool. Thanks, Tehan, uh, for reminding me. All right. Okay. So uh, we're gonna uh, use uh, Visual Studio 2019 uh, plus UWP. So UWP is Universal Windows Platform. Uh, you know we're gonna uh, we're gonna need uh, both of these, and then uh, we're gonna use Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit. Uh, that's a separate Unity plugin, and I'm gonna use uh, 2.4.0, right? So you can you can install Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit by. So let me get this. Here we go. Uh, so I'll be sharing with uh, I'll be sharing these links uh, with you after the after the workshop. Uh, you can go to this GitHub folder, GitHub link, and you can go to the releases section. And yep, you can 
Um, you can you can download the latest version, which is 2.6.1. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to use 2.4.0. Oh, yeah, there we go. And you can like uh, expand this. So this is the one that we're going to use. Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit Unity Foundation 2.0 2.4.0 Unity Package. So download this. Uh, and yes, and let's see. Okay. All right. So. When you're installing Visual Studio, after you install Visual Studio 2019, go to the uh, go to the modify section uh, of the Visual Studio installer, and then install the Universal Windows Platform Development Package. Right? Uh, sometimes Unity might ask you to download the desktop development with C++ package, uh, so it's it's um, it's optional, but it's better to install this as well. So when you install this, it will automatically install some of these packages, right? Uh, which is the Windows 10 SDK, right? 10.0.18362.0. So this is what um, is uh, going to support your Hololens 2 development. All right. Now, I'm going to open Unity Hub. There we go. Um, so I'm going to create a new project. right? So just as I said, I'm going to use the 2019.4.0, which, yeah, I don't have the 2019.4.0. I have uh, 4.20 F1. But 2019.4, whatever the version that you have, it's going to work. So I'm going to choose this. Right, and I'm gonna choose 3D. Right, I'm gonna give a name like Hello Hololens. Yeah, like this, and I'm gonna create. So this might take some time. So just uh, just to save your time, I kind of created a project myself. Right, uh, so I'm gonna close this. Right, I'm gonna open up that project. Yep. There we go. So yeah, I've seen some people who are like very, very new to Unity. So I'll give a very brief introduction to the Unity uh, uh, Unity interface. We have the hierarchy here, and we have the whole, you know, the 3D scene where you can, uh, you know, you know, put all these 3D objects, which is really similar to Blender or Windows or whatever uh, the uh, uh, the 3D. Uh, you know, development platform, which is kind of similar to this. Uh, and then we have the, the project, where we have all these assets and all these uh, files that we are going to use in this project. And and we have the, uh, you know, the animations uh, um, uh, window, where we are going to create a little bit of uh, animations. And here, we kind of have the inspector window. So if you if you select a certain object that is in the, in the 3D scene, you can see the properties that we can change in the inspector window. So very basic introduction to the Unity uh, Unity interface, right? So as a start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. I'm going to let this Unity uh, project know that I'm going to build, uh, uh, you know, that I'm going to build a, a Hololens application. So to do that, go to File, go to Build Settings. And in build settings, so you know, if you, if you start your project, it's gonna be at you know PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select Universal Windows Platform, and you're gonna, uh, you know, so here you're gonna see a button called Switch Platform, and you're gonna tick that. So it's gonna take some it's gonna take some time to do that, but I've already done that. So if you don't have uh, this uh, thing called uh, Universal Windows Platform right here, sometimes you might see. Uh, something like this, right? No UWP module loaded, right? So uh, if this happens, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the install section. You're going to want to go to the, you know, whatever the, the, um, the, the Unity version. And you tick this and click Add Modules. Inside this, you can scroll down and select Universal Windows Platform Build Support. So it's, it's kind of big. Uh, and it's kind of, might take a little bit of your time, so it's better to like install this uh, before starting your project. Cool. Right. Okay. So 
once you do that, you can see that you know whatever the target device that you're gonna uh, you know build whatever your application, you can select any device. Uh, at this moment, I'm gonna choose the HoloLens. Right now, the first step is done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the mixed reality toolkit package provided by Microsoft. Uh, so that I'm, you know, with that I'm going to use all this, uh, you know, mixed reality. Um, uh, it's kind of like the Hololens SDK uh, provided for Unity. So to do that, you know, as I've said, first you you're going to want to download this package, and you're going to go to File, sorry, Edit. No, not Edit. Sorry, Assets, Import Package. You're going to select Custom Package. And then you're going to choose wherever your package is, which is this. And you're going to select Open. It might take a little while to decompress and open. All right. OK. That little manoeuvre took 51 years. <laughs> huh. All right, anyway, so this kind of like lists down all of the files that you're going to import uh, from this package to your Unity uh, Unity project. So I kind I actually uh, imported this package already to my uh, to my project. So that that is why it's taking such a such a long time to you know to figure out what are the files that are missing in my project, and you know what are the new files that uh, this is going to import. Right. So I'm I'm going to give a pause to this, and I'm going to get back to my slide. Right, so when you when you import, it's gonna it's gonna give this. Uh, you know, it's gonna pop up this uh, this window, which you have to like tick, uh, which you have to uh, you know import this uh, mixed reality toolkit. You know, you have to you know once you have once you have like imported all these package files into your project, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to apply these settings, right? So it will automatically give you this uh, this window. And then you're gonna hit apply, and it will be installed. All right. So the Unity is taking such a hard time. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Mm -mm. All right. So, if you have questions, uh, you can uh, ask uh, me some of you know some basic questions while this is uh, <laughs> is ongoing. All right. A quick question. Anybody has uh, anybody has a Hololens to uh, with uh, you know? Does anybody have a Hololens too? What are the coolest applications you've seen using HoloLens 2? All right. Um, the coolest application that I saw of both the, um, uh, actually the, uh, the, the Microsoft Mesh, you know, it came, uh, it came like a month ago. You know, uh, it's kind of a platform that is provided by Microsoft so that you can like, you can collaborate in the same space. Which is which is really cool. So if you uh, if you are really into this, just search for Microsoft Mesh and you know just have a look. Uh, it's gonna be amazing. All right. So yeah. So Unity took an eternity to load the package, and there we go. So you got you'll see that all of these items are ticked. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit import, and once you do that, you'll be provided with a with a um, uh, with a a window like this, and you're going to hit apply, right? So once you do that, now the Unity project will know that you're going to build an application to the HoloLens. All, all right. OK. So here, I have created a, a standard scene, um, which is known as Workshop. And if you don't have, uh, if you don't have something like this, uh, you can create a new scene. Just by right-clicking the project uh, project folder, you know wherever in the project folder. So I'm I'm in my assets folder. I'm in my workshop one, and I've created a separate folder called scenes. Inside it, uh, I have this scene. So I can you can create by right-clicking, going create, create a scene, and I can give your own name. 
Right, now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna set up this scene so such that it would um, be compatible with the HoloLens, right? So Microsoft has made this a lot easier for you guys. So it's, uh, it's, it's really hard. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to like click Mix Reality Toolkit, click Add to Scene and Configure. That's pretty much it, right? That's pretty much it. So this two new, you know, um, you can, there, there was a camera in the scene, which is known as main camera. Uh, you know, by, by selecting add to scene and configure, that camera kind of went into the mixed reality play space um, object right here, right? And then we have uh, a new uh, object called mixed reality toolkit. Uh, where it manage all the configurations of the uh, the MRTK. Cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, we're gonna create the scene. Uh, all right. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change some configurations, right? Um, so you know. When I click the Mixed Reality Toolkit object, in the Inspector window, it kind of gives you a lot of uh, uh, components that you can change. Uh, but there is there is a problem here, right? So there there are some you know uh, warnings saying that you don't want to you you don't want to change these settings, right? That is because uh, Microsoft has provided a default configuration profile, right? These configuration profiles are kind of um, uh, configuration files that defines uh, you know how your Hololens application should work when it launches uh, in the um, uh, in the Hololens device, right? And it, and Microsoft has not allowed uh, to change these default settings. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna clone this configuration so that you can change you know you can change these uh, these settings. And if you screw up, right? If you screw up, uh, and uh, so these, these settings like you know, you have like massive amount of settings. So if you screw up, you just can't go back to your default uh, configuration profile and clone it again, and you're, you're back on track. So to do that, so this is the default uh, configuration profile. You can click the clone button right here, which will open up another window like this. And here you can give a new name, oops. I'm going to click it again. So here, instead of new, I'm going to choose HoloLens Workshop, HoloLens Workshop Mixed Reality Toolkit Configuration Profile Clone. This will automatically create a new profile over here. And you can select the toolkit. And now you'll be able to change the, uh, the settings, right? So in this, you know, universal universal settings screen. You'll you uh, you'll see some different uh, uh, options like the camera settings, input settings, boundary settings, spatial awareness. Um, so I'm gonna give you a basic introduction of spatial awareness. Uh, spatial awareness is kind of like the uh, uh, the virtual environment that the Hololens creates inside its uh, its uh, its system. So that it will map all the all the all the objects, all the all the obstacles that you see in your actual world, right? So if you if you wear this device and if you enable the spatial awareness, it kind of like creates this whole mesh around you, right? This mesh will be like uh, it will it will capture all the obstacles that are around you, right? So whatever the uh, the uh, the application that you're building, you can leverage this virtual space. And you can spawn content on on top of this special awareness mesh. So this mesh is kind of like a three is kind of a three D object that is that is invisible, right? But in the virtual world, it kind of like has all these collisions and all these um, you know all these physics based parameters. So if you're building if you're building a physics based application, you know uh, if you want to throw some balls, you know some you know if you want to create a game that uh, that uses the uh, the actual world around you, uh, the spatial awareness is uh, is gonna is gonna help you out a lot, right? So here, uh, if you want to change these profiles, you're gonna have to like uh, you know uh, 
So these these default profiles, you're gonna have to like clone them as well. Um, and but in this uh, particular application, I'm not gonna choose uh, all of these profiles. Uh, I'm th I'm just gonna like give you a basic introduction of you know if you if you if you want to change these profiles, you're gonna have to clone first, right? So this would be Hololens Workshop Mixed Reality Spatial Awareness System, blah blah blah, right? Clone it. And now you'll be able to change the uh, change the settings, right? I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my presentation to give you uh, an introduction of what we are going to build today, right? Okay, so I have a simple plumbing apparatus over here, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to you know I'm going to give an introduction of you know, putting all putting all these assets together so you can create this uh, create this apparatus by yourself. But to, to make things easy, I have provided this uh, in the in the package that I'm sharing with you. Uh, all right. So imagine that you have uh, the public water supply from this side, and you have your home or you have your you know whatever the water receiver on this side, right? And then you have a tank uh, on top of your house, right? So what the uh, so there are like two configurations, right? So the public water system will go will flow through well one, and if the well three is closed, it will go to the tank, and there'll be another filtration in the tank, and whatever the water that is coming out from the tank will go through well four, and will go to the to the house or whatever the the receiver, right? And the other option is if we turn this valve two and valve four off like you know uh the public water will go from one to three through the filter that we have here to the house right so the assumption is assumption is uh to guide somebody to switch the water flow from the tank to the public water system that is what we're going to do right so the current configuration is these two valves are open this one is open, this one is closed, right? So the water will flow from one, two, to four, and to the house. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this two. We're gonna clean the filter, right? So, uh, you know, just before uh, sending the public water supply directly, we're gonna clean the filter. Uh, and we're gonna open this th valve three. We're gonna close both, both of, uh, you know, two and four. And the public water system, public water, will go from one to three to the house. So that is the basic idea of the uh, of the plumbing maintenance guide that we're gonna show. So basically these are the steps uh, that we are gonna, we are gonna, uh, you know, uh, let the, uh, uh, let the trainee see, right? First, you're gonna turn valve flow clock clockwise to close it, turn valve one clockwise to close and turn off public water supply turn valve two clockwise right so we're gonna uh, we're gonna turn all these three so we're gonna close uh, the uh, the public water supply for some time and then we're gonna you know get this filter out we're gonna clean it we're gonna attach it and then we're going to turn the valve three and one counterclockwise that so that the public water system will flow from one to three and it will not go from two to four cool all good uh, are we clear? Can I see some responses in the chat? Cool. All right, so I'm going to end this. Amazing. All right. Cool, so let me get back to this. Right. So if you if you check the uh, mixed reality place place, you can just double click, which will take you to to zero 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 location. And if you enable Gizmos, um, go. If you enable Gizmos, you can see that the camera. No, this is the. Oops. You have. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this this is the camera. Uh, is going to like you know see whatever the 3D object in the space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, 
empty an empty game object, right? And I'm going to make name this as the structure, right? And I'm going to reset this position to zero zero zero, and I'm going to so if I select the camera, so the camera is looking at this direction. So the structure, I'm going to take this a little bit to the to the left. Okay, so whatever the object that you're going to place here um, is going to be is going to be visible to the camera, All right? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this this same apparatus in my scene. I'm going to give a basic introduction to you know to go about designing it. I'm going to use the basic uh, 3D objects, right? So I'm going to create a 3D cube, which is a bit massive. So I'm going to reduce the size to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. Oops. Right. And I am going to take my transform tool so that I can create a vault. A vault like this. Right, so this is the vault, and on top of it, I'm going to drag and drop all these pipes. Um, right, so since some of you guys are like very new to Unity, I'm going to you know go about creating uh, materials, you know, so that you can apply color and apply textures to this. So uh, in my in my project folder, I'm going to create a new folder called materials. Right inside this, I'm gonna create a material, and I'm gonna name this as wall material, and I'm gonna apply this material to my wall just by dragging and dropping uh, this over here. Right, so this doesn't look like a wall, right? Uh, to do that, I'm gonna change the albedo and the normal map, right? So if you click albedo. Uh, you'll be able to see this uh, this um, brick texture, which kind of gives you this. Uh, all right, so about the textures, uh, I'm going to share you a Unity package, which contains all the models and all the textures that we are going to build uh, in this project, right? So don't worry about it. So if you have your own textures, you can use them to, uh, to create your uh, own type of world. Right, so on top of this, uh, inside the structure, I have provided, you know, in the in that package, I have provided you the models, right? So you can, so this this package will be models and pipes. You can import this import this package just by going to, you know, assets, uh, assets, import package, custom package, and choose the package that we are providing, which will which will, um, uh, you know, which will uh, copy this uh, this folder. Inside this folder, you have something called prefabs. Right, a prefabs folder, and inside this, uh, you can change this slider, and you can uh, see how these prefabs would look like. And here, you can see all these different types of pipes, right? So what you're gonna do is you can you can create your own structure by dragging and dropping all these pipes over here, right? But the problem is that this pipe is huge. Right. All right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the scale tool so that you can scale this all the way down, yeah. all the way down. And this is your pipe. Right. Cool. And you can you can use these tools uh, if you are new to Unity. You can use this uh, you know manipulation tools. This is the move tool where you can like move your objects around the scene. This is the rotate tool where you can like you know rotate everything, all these 3D objects. And this is the scale tool, right? So I'm going to use my rotate tool. I'm going to rotate this in about 90 degrees, right? Or else you can use the you can click the object. You can select the uh, the the transform component in the inspector window and change this to 90. Right, maybe you might want to scale this down a little bit like this. And uh, you can move around the scene, you know, by right clicking and then using your WA and SD controls. Right, so there we go. Right, 
so the size of this is uh, 0 0.199. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And I'm going to take this uh, pipe object to my scene as well. Uh, I'm going to uh, change the scale of this to 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. And now I'm going to rotate this maybe like this, which is 90 degrees from the z-axis. And using your move tool, uh, you know, you can just copy the, uh, the z-axis of this, which is 0 0.1833. And you can paste to uh, the, the position of this other pipe as well, which will align the z-axis, right? So you can just move it here. And you can just move it like this. There we go. Right. Now I have a valve object here. All right. So I'm going to drag and drop my valve. Where do we have it? There we go. A huge, a huge valve. So I'm going to, I'm going to change the scale of this to 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. Oh. So, and I'm going to rotate this in the y-axis. It should be minus 90 degrees. All right, so the alignment, right? If, if you're like having trouble, you know, maybe if you like uh, take this like the, you know, move this like, move the valve like this, and it's, it's going to look weird. So you can just select the, uh, you can click this uh, cube object here which will change the perspective to isometric uh, from the uh, from the perspective mode. And using this uh, handles, uh, you can get like a, a, a full side view, right? And by using the handles, you can move this object, right? So that can precisely, even this guy right here, you can precisely move this. So this is gonna take uh, a tremendous portion of your time you know, to create the apparatus. Um, and one thing to mention is that uh, it is better to create, it is better to keep all of this, uh, um, uh, you know, it's better to keep all of these objects in separate uh, groups, right? Uh, so for example, you can, um, uh, you know, you can create uh, an empty game object. So I'm gonna create an empty, empty game object inside my structure. Uh, and I'm gonna name it as apparatus, right? So in my apparatus, I'm gonna drag and drop all of my pipes into this. So I have like, you know, so if, if you are gonna scale everything, you don't wanna scale, you know, pipes and everything individually, you can just select the apparatus and scale this. There we go. We can scale to, to whatever the size we want. There we go. Right, so I'm going to make this uh, this easier for myself. You know, I'm not going to take a lot of time because we have very limited time to build this. So what I have done is I have created the structure, the wall, and everything already. So I'm going to delete this for the moment, and I'm going to drag and drop my wall prefab into my structure. You know, this one right here, and pipe structure this so this is the all right so just just to just to give you an idea this is kind of like very big you know we kind of scaled it down so if you like you know if you, if you use the default unity uh, uh, unity uh, uh, scales one unit in the scale is um, uh, is given by one meter right so if this is like 0 0.73 that represents like 70 centimeters in the actual world, um, which is kind of okay, right? If you're like, if you're, if you're working with the with the actual uh, apparatus, uh, but it, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to scale. I'm I'm going right, to reduce the scale of this um, so that it will it will make things easier uh, for the uh, for testing it out as well. Cool. Right. So uh, now the the instruction that I'm going to do instruction set that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a little bit of a user interface on top of the valve 4 uh, something like um, uh, you know something like a guide 
so that uh, gives an idea to the to the person who's like who's controlling this to rotate this uh, this valve. So to do that, I have a, um, there we go. Yeah, I have an image, something like this. Right. This is an image that I created using Illustrator or GIMP or whatever they, you know, you can even download this uh, from uh, from websites such as Flat Icon um, or, or you can just create your own and you can just drag and drop it in your project folder, which will give you a sprite. So first thing that you're going to do is you're going to click this, go to this texture type and change this to sprite. Right. And this will become a sprite. And you can click the structure. You can drag and drop this sprite on top of your wall. There we go. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, you know, I'm going to use my move tool, and I'm going to use my scale tool to scale this down. Right. And with the move tool, I'm going to, I'm going to choose this. Ooh. Right, there we go. Cool, I'm going to use the um, the scale tool so that I can scale this a little bit. And let me go back to the perspective mode. All right, this feels good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an animation to this guy uh, to, to give an indication that you have to, you know, rotate this. Um, this valve clockwise right to easily do that i'm going to go to animations uh window so if you don't have the animations window you can take this by going you can bring that up by going to window uh animation choosing animation right so in order for an animation to work you have to uh, uh you have to have a animator component attached to this right and then uh, you have to create an animation object uh, so just to, just to save time, I'm just going to select this object. And here, I'm going to create. I'm going to tick this Create button, which will automatically create an animation and uh, an animator for us. Right. So I'm going to go to my workshop one. I'm going to create a new folder called Animations. Animations. And inside this, I'm going to do this as Rotate Clockwise. I'm going to hit Save. Which will give uh, me an ax give me the access uh, to the to the timeline. So I'm going to click click the record button over here, and I'm going to take my slider to maybe around two two seconds. So this represents two seconds, and I'm going to rotate this, you know, the z axis. And I'm going to choose minus 360, which will so which will create keyframes at zero and at two at the same time. So if you go back, you know, if you if you scrub through this uh, this timeline, you can see that the animation is now working. So if you uh, get rid of if you like uh, toggle this um, uh, record button and select play, now we can see that this kind of gives a cool smooth animation. Cool. All right. All right. So now what I'm going to do is, right, uh, I might want to, I might want to reuse uh, this um, this object to my other valves as well, right? So to do that, I'm going to create uh, this this um, object a prefab, right? So to do uh, a prefab is kind of like a, like a template that you create using your own objects. And then, if you if you want to reuse these objects, and um, if you want to like you know change the the parameters of the parent object and all of the child objects will uh, not actually the child objects, but the 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 uh, the repetitive objects to be uh, 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 to have the same uh, same parameters, you can just use prefab. So I'm going to create a new folder called prefabs. 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 Yep, and I'm gonna drag my rotation guide from my hierarchy to my prefabs folder, which will turn this to something you know blue, right? And uh, you know we'll have uh, 
we'll have it like this. So you can now, you know, from here, you can just drag and drop a lot of uh, uh, rotation guides, right? So this will, you know, automatically rotate every time which uh, when this gets activated, right? So I'm going to delete this. Um, OK, so this is my first step, right? So the first step is basically to uh, uh, to ask the, the trainee to rotate this valve. So what I'm going to do is, in my uh, in my hierarchy, I'm going to create uh, an empty game object. I'm going to do it inside this structure, right? So it will be 0, 0, 0 inside the structure. And I'm going to drag it out so that this game object will be at the at the center. OK, that's fine. Anyway, so I'm going to name this as uh, steps, right? So these are the steps that I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, have different objects. So inside my steps, I'm going to create another empty game object. And I'm going to name this as step, step one. And I'm going to drag my rotation guide into my step one. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, clone my step one, you know, uh, the over here. The second step is to first step is to turn the valve four clockwise, and the second step second step is to turn the valve one clockwise, right? All right. So it's pretty simple. So I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Control D. I'm going to change the name of this to step two, right? So inside my step two. So in Unity, you can activate and deactivate objects uh, by selecting the object. And in the hierarchy window, you can tick this, which will you know deactivate the object. So I'm going to deactivate my step one, right? Which will like give me the step two object over here. And inside my step two, I have the rotation guide, which I want to move this to my valve number four. Is this valve number four? Couldn't remember. Sorry, valve number one. Yeah. This one right here. All right, so it's pretty simple, right? So the step one, step one would be to turn this valve clockwise, and step two would be to turn this valve clockwise. So now, if you have like multiple steps, right? Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna create another I'm gonna create another uh, step, which is kind of like interesting. Uh, it should not match. It it might not match uh, the, uh, the the same workflow, but you know to to save to save our time, I'm just gonna skip to that step. So for for example, imagine this would be the step four, maybe. So inside my step four, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my filter object, which I have over here, right. So I have this uh, water filter, which is a, which is a prefab. You can just remove this, right? So I'm going to do is I'm going to create a material to this filter, right? So that it would look like um, it would look like something. Uh, it would look like a, uh, how do you put it? Like a hologram, right? Which gives you uh, an idea uh, of that this is the object that you have to remove in order to clean. Right, so I'm going to create a new material. Right click, click uh, create material, filter, hologram, something. And you know, since we have imported Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit, uh, I can select my holo, uh, this uh, uh, material that I created. Uh, in, my, in the inspector window, I can select the shader. I'm going to change this to Mixed Reality Toolkit standard right so i'm just going to drag and drop this on top of uh, on top of all these uh, sub objects in my filter all right there we go so this kind of have like multiple multiple materials you can you can choose like multiple materials but you know to save time i'm going to i'm going to choose just one all right so i'm going to change the rendering mode of this to additive right and the albedo, I'm going to change this to black. So now you can see that this kind of uh, this kind of uh, look looks like this. It's cool. And you can uh, maybe go to rim light and maybe give a color 
like blue or something like this. And now this kind of looks like, uh, can okay, increase the power. This kind of looks like a hologram that, you know, that gives you and I, that gives the trainee an idea of, yeah, this is the object that you have. This is the, this is a component that you have to remove. But anyway, I did a mistake. So I'm going to like go back a couple of steps. Right, so I'm going to clone this by hitting Control D, right, and I'm going to drag my water filter object, the the one that I cloned, to my step four, right. And if I if I deactivate my pipe structure, I can just, uh, yeah, let me do that again. Back attitude, change this to black. Get a rim light. Give a color and increase the power okay cool right all right so this is the water filter and if you like get the pipe structure so if you know if we give an animation like you know if you create an animation that you have to you know turn this filter and pull this right so you can do the same. You can do. Uh, you can go to the animations tab uh, window, and you can create an animation, and then you can replicate that same animation that I just did, right? So I'm not going to do that because it might take some time, and this will be my step number four, right? There we go. So now uh, the basic idea is that we are going to give a menu, right? We're going to give uh, like three. We're going to give like two buttons uh, for the for the user so that they can like use use their hands to press these buttons and you know just follow along these steps right so the basic idea is that you have the list of steps you can activate step one and when the when the user goes to step number two you can deactivate everything you can activate step two step four or maybe you can deactivate everything and go to step four such like that right so we have seven steps and we're gonna, we're gonna you know, we can create, you know, different objects for all of these steps. Cool. Now is the time for scripting because we're going to, we're going to create a script such that uh, by attaching it to two different buttons, it will cycle through these, uh, these steps. Right. So to, to create a, a script, let me go to my workshop one folder, create a new folder called scripts. And I'm going to create a new script known as flow manager. I'm going to name it, name this as workshop one. Flow manager workshop one. And I'm going to double click, which will open my Visual Studio or whatever the IDE. Huh. Right, seems like it's taking some time. Mm -hmm. Where do we have it? All right, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna go through uh, the you know uh, the the whole scripting uh, um, C sharp. Uh, elements right now. I'm just gonna go through what is what is the code that we are gonna we are gonna write. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to you know get rid of the update method and also this um, uh, this comment. I'm gonna import. I'm gonna uh, create two public variables. You know just to just to keep track just to keep the reference of the steps. So this will be public name object, and I'm gonna name it as uh, uh, guide steps, and I'm going to create and I'm going to get the the transform reference of the parent, you know, because we want to like deactivate all of these objects. I'm going to name this as step holder, right? And now since this has like some dynamic steps, uh, we're gonna we're gonna need uh, another variable to to keep track of the current step. 
So for that, I'm gonna import. I'm gonna create another private int variable known as current step, which will be equal to zero. And you know, after the start method, I'm gonna create another method to reset everything, which will be known as reset flow. Right. And I'm going to create another method, void hide all steps. So this method will hide all of the steps before like switching back to another step, right? And on top of this, I'm going to create another, so the main method that we want. Uh, I'm going to name it. I'm going to get. Uh, I'm going to uh, the uh, write this as a pri public uh, method so that we can access this method from outside. Public wide change step. Right. So this change step, you know, this step can be, uh, you know, the next step or the previous step. So I'm gonna, uh, you know, to 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 differentiate that, I'm gonna create a bool, uh, which will tell whether this is the the next one or the previous one. Right. So in my uh, hide all steps, what I'm gonna do is. Um, I'm going to create a for each loop for each transform child in step holder child oops, child you have it yeah child dot game object dot sec active false right so in my reset flow just gonna I'll hide all steps uh, and also I'm going to uh, uh, set the current step back to zero current step equals zero and then I'm going to like uh, uh, you know uh, get the first of the, the first step of this to activate right so to do that hide steps Step zero, which will get the first object of the steps. Zero dot set active. True. Cool. And my start method, I'm going to reset the flow. So it, when, when you're starting the project, it will automatically reset. Right. So in my change step, right, I'm going to first check whether you are. So I'm, I'm writing the very basic uh, C sharp code. Right, so first of all, I'm going to check whether this is is next or not. If this is is next, then I'm going to check this whether the current step is greater than or equal to the length of the guide steps. And I'm going to reduce one because I don't want to like go over the steps. And I'm just going to return. If this happens, it shouldn't. It shouldn't like try to, uh, you know, uh, try to show another step because we don't have uh, such a step, right? And if that is not, I'm going to increment the current step by one, right? Else, that means if this is false, you know, which is the the, the previous previous step, I'm just going to copy the same. Oh uh, no, not the same. If current step lesser than or equal to zero, it's gonna return, which will like get out of this method. And I'm gonna choose current step minus minus, which will reduce the step. Right, so now here we would get the same get a copy of it, put it like this. So the index would be current step. All right. So what I have done is in this change step method, it will deactivate all the objects in my in my steps um, uh, object and activate the step that is in the in the current step um, index. Cool. Now let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. All right. So uh, I'm going to create another. All right. So it's going to take some time to compile and put everything. All right, so I'm going to create another game object. 
I'm going to name this as app controller. All right, I'm going to drag and drop my script here. And in my guide steps, you know, uh, so I can lock this inspector window and I can, you know, get all these steps. And I can drag and drop in, on top of this, which will automatically fill out the array. And the steps hold, the step holder will be the parent of the steps. There we go. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import um, a prefab that is provided by Mixed Reality Toolkit so that we can use these buttons um, to activate whatever the um, the steps, you know, the, 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 the flow of the steps that we're going to visualize. Right. To do that, you know, since you have imported MRTK, you can go to MRTK, SDK, Features, UX, Prefabs. Yeah, that's a long way down. Menus. And here you'll see a menu called Near Menu 3 by, 3 by 1. You can just drag and drop it on the scene. You can reset this position to maybe 0, 0, 0. You can double click and click get closer if you turn off the uh, mouse. This is what it's going to look like. So basically, this is a UI that is provided by MRTK, right? Which will have you know all these buttons, and I'm going to use this uh, to guide uh, to to get my script working, right? So if you expand the near menu, uh, you can select the button collection. If you select button one, uh, let's get rid of this lock, which will give you a whole bunch of components. Uh, we won't need everything, right? So what we need is the this one, button config helper, right? So here you can change the icon, you can change this. So I'm going to change uh, this to pre um, previous step. Right? I'm going to choose this. Select button two. This will be reset. I'm going to choose this button, button number three will be next step this yes, okay so this one okay so this one should be now uh, rotated to the other way so i'm going to go inside this here you can see something called icon and text if you select the the icon ui square button icon i'm going to change the y scale to oops sorry Now let me take this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate this. Yeah, let me just put 180. There we go. So we have a cool looking menu right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each and every button, right? And I'm going to attach my script, which is the um, which is the change step function, right? So I'm going to I'm going to attach just this change step function so that it will uh it will execute when we press this button cool so let me create click this button and in here on click i'm going to drag and drop my app controller which will list down all the components inside this so flow manager workshop one is the script that we wrote and inside this we have something called change step so since this is the previous step this boolean is the east next so i'm going to keep it as it is and for button two I think I might want to change this reset flow to public. Otherwise, I would not be able to see this in the inspector window. All right. OK, button two. I'm going to drag and drop my app controller. Select flow manager workshop, reset flow. Button three, drag and drop this, flow manager workshop. Res uh, it should be the change step. And I'm going to tick this because it should be the next step. Cool. So now, what would happen is, OK, so now you can see the size of the menu and this uh, this whole apparatus, right? Um, so probably you might want to you might want to reduce the scale. You can do that easily by you know selecting the structure and steps. 
you know, maybe put the steps uh, thing inside the structure, and then you can uh, uh, get your scale tool so that you can scale this all the way down. Uh, so I'm not going to do that uh, for the moment. Uh, now you can test this using your editor, right? So to test it, you just have to click play. All right, which will execute and might take a while. There we go. So now you can just use by uh, by using your right click, you can just look around and you can see that the step one is active. And this profiler is a kind of a profiler that is provided by uh, 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 by HoloLens MRTK just to see whether your memory and whether your performance is up to up to a level, right? Toggle profiler. Okay, so you know I just used the uh, 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 you know the, the the voice feature so that I just toggled the profiler. Cool. Anyway. Right. Okay. Okay. So if you press the shift key, it will show you this hand, right? So with your scroll up and down, you can, uh, you know, get this hand, which will like, which will depict the actual hand movement in the HoloLens. Uh, but for some reason, I don't see my UI following me. All right. Let's see what's happening right there. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. You have to enable the radial view, which will follow you when you move across. Okay, let's play that again. All right, now, now you can see that when I when I move my head, this uh, this thing right here kind of like follows me. When I like move, it will follow me. All right, so I can I can use uh, I can click this. To pin it so I can just move closer. Now you can see, you know, we can see all this uh, this UI feedback that it provides when you are like moving your uh, your mouse or whether your hand or whatever, right? So this kind of like gives you an idea that this is a button where you have to like tap it, right? So this is the UI feedback that is provided by the MRTK. All right. So if you click this, so let me uh, let me get an overview, hold overview, and if you click this. You can see that this automatically shows the next step. And if you click this, it will show the other step as well. All right, for some reason, it shows all the steps. I think this should be, this should be false. All right, so the change step, the first one that I should do is I need to uh, hide all steps. No. I should put this here, otherwise uh, the, the step wouldn't hide. So now let's go back. Let's just have another run. Okay. All right. Okay, so let me pin this guy. And if you select, if you click this, it will take you to the next step. And if you click this, it will take you to this step and you can reset. And also maybe like, you know, you can cycle in between the steps. Right, now I have already created this. Uh, I have already created um, all of these steps previously. So let me open up that scene which is inside my prepared scenes main. All right, so here we have all of these steps. So let me let me give you a quick run through all of these steps. Mm -hmm. Cool. So these are the steps that we're gonna visualize inside the HoloLens. Okay, change this valve. And so this is the animation that I have created, you know? And so you have to like, you know, remove this and then you have to like put it back in after cleaning. And then you have to, you know, so this is a different animation which uses the, sta which uses the same object, right? Same sprite. And there we have it. We have all these seven steps. 
Cool, now it's the time to build this into a HoloLens device. Right, so when setting this up, right, so the first things that I think I kind of forgot, uh, so the first thing that you want to do is you have to go to the assets folder, sorry, um, edit, project settings. You want to go to XR, uh, sorry, you want to go to the player settings and you want to scroll all the way to the bottom. And here you have to tick virtual reality supported. And then, uh, and when you do that, it will ask you what are the SDKs that you're gonna uh, you're gonna use. So from here, you're gonna choose Windows Mixed Reality, and it will ask you to change the depth. You know the the depth format uh, from 24 to 16. Uh, you know this is like the uh, the depth that it's gonna draw all these 3D objects. So it's better to keep it at a low low value, uh, which is the 16 bit. Um, all right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to build settings. I'm going to choose HoloLens. I'm going to set the architecture to 64-bit. And I'm going to click build, which will ask me where to build this. So I'm going to create a new folder, which is known as build. And I'm going to select the folder. So this, this whole thing is uh, going to take a little bit of time, right? But when you build it, it will give you something like this. Inside your build folder, you will see something like this. And you want to open the solution, the Visual Studio solution that has pro that the Unity has built for you. You can double click and you can open this, uh, 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 which is taking quite a bit of time. All right, there we go. It will open something like this. And if you have the HoloLens 2, right? If you have the HoloLens 2, you want to change this. Uh, you know, first of all, you want to change this to release. And if you have a HoloLens 2, you have to change this to either ARM or ARM64. Uh, and if, you're, if your HoloLens is attached to your computer, it will list down the, the, the device that you're going to use. Uh, but here, I'm going to use the uh, X64, which is the HoloLens emulator. Uh, you can go, you can just search for HoloLens, HoloLens 2 emulator, and you can download it from uh, uh, the, the Microsoft website. Uh, it's going to be around 8 to 9, 10 gigs. Um, so you can, uh, you can install it. Uh, and there, I have selected the HoloLens 2 emulator, and I'm going to choose debug, start without debugging. So this might take quite a while to build, right? So uh, so until that happens, I'm going to invite Brandon back into the stage so he can continue the rest of the session. So after that, you know, before the Q&A, I will be able to show a demonstration of how this would look like in the actual HoloLens. Are we good, Brandon? Yes, yes, we are good. Thank you very much, Indica. That was, uh, that was great. Thank you for providing the step-by-step. Uh, -step and. Um, showing everyone the assets and then kind of how to manipulate and modify them. That's huge. <laughs> Definitely uh, agree with you. The, the HoloLens is a different kind of beast. Um, great technology to be using. Um, what we will do is jump back into the presentation. I can share my screen. Okay, there we go. So yeah, thank you very much, Indica. Um, just to kind of just to kind of reiterate and and recap uh, what was mentioned before, um, while this is is all uh, loading for us, um, CircuitStream provides a number of different courses. So just to kind of reiterate, uh, our XR Development with Unity course is ten weeks long. Uh, it's about four hours each week. Um, in terms of what you'll be learning. The C Sharp fundamentals is huge. You'll be learning how to create apps and experiences in AR and VR within Unity. Uh, it's a blended learning style. So you'll have you know, three hours of coursework each week and then one hour of one-on-one -on -one time with our instructors. Uh, so it's a great course to go through if you're, if you're just getting started. Definitely beginner friendly. Uh, again, if you are you know, more intermediate, more advanced, uh, we do have our XR Project Accelerator course. Uh, for 4450 uh, eight week portfolio course unity experience is required five hours of class per week 
being three hours of lecture time and two hours with one-on-one uh, -on -one instructor time. Uh, so the two hours is, is, is huge there. There's weekly office hours you can attend uh, for one-off questions. You will be able to you know, potentially get a, a circuit stream certification, which is recognized by Unity in the industry. Uh, and it really is meant to accelerate the design, the development and launch of any capstone project you bring into the course with you. Uh, for anyone interested in those courses, certainly reach out to myself or, or either of my colleagues. Um, we do have payment plans if you are interested. Uh, we, we have the option of three, six, and 12-month payment plans as well as upfront payment, uh, depending on you know what works for you. Again, I'll just mention the team training that we provide. Uh, please feel free to get into contact uh, with myself or any of my team members. If you are an educator or a business and want to learn more about this, uh, this team training, we would love to schedule a presentation, talk to your team, and answer any questions about the ways XR can benefit your organization. Lastly, um, our one-on-one -on -one live sessions with XR experts, our instructors, uh, they're personal live sessions focused on XR project support personal learning objectives and career goals. And they are offered, um, you know, you can you can come to us with either Unity or Unreal Engine. Our instructors are, are you know, well, uh, well established with either of those engines. In terms of the XR development with Unity course, if you are interested in, in just kind of taking a deeper look at that, you can access our, our syllabus, our course syllabus on our website. And this will give you kind of a breakdown of week by week what you'd be learning. Uh, so definitely take a look at that if you are interested in expanding on your skills. Um, also feel free um, to book a meeting with myself or, or either of my colleagues, Kyle and Steph, uh, or just get in contact. We'd love to, uh, to share more and, and add clarity to any of the offerings that we have here at CircuitStream. Um, so please feel free to, uh, to get connected. And then lastly, just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, it was a little bit longer. I think I, uh, I think I maybe lied to everybody on the, uh, the amount of time it would take, but uh, it was a very extensive workshop and, and I appreciate Indica, you know, taking the time to go through each step uh, and making it very clear for everybody. Um, so with that in mind, what I'd like to do now is just share some of the questions that we had. Um, so I will cancel the screen sharing here and We'll just go by um, you know, when they were asked. So first off, how did you learn XR development yourself? A question from Steven Yang. Um, Indica, how did you learn? <laughs> uh, yeah, tricky question. Um, you can do you can learn XR development just by you know just by uh, using the official tools provided by official instructions provided by Oculus, Microsoft, um, and also Unity. Unity is kind of like giving a, you know a various different tutorials and various different workshops. And also I, I used to be uh, I used to be a, a workshop fan of Circuit Stream before joining Circuit Stream. <laughs> so this kind of gave Stop. me uh, you know uh, I, I remember that you know all of these the senior instructors you know giving cool guidelines so it kind of like gave me the motivation to work on xr development and uh, yeah pretty much you have like a ton of resources you can just use the official channels like microsoft you know for hololens microsoft has a very descriptive um, uh, workshop kind of yeah cool Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So I know, I know with uh, Unity, Unreal Engine, I'm sure Microsoft as well, they all have a very extensive libraries uh, that you can leverage to, to kind of get your feet wet and, uh, and start learning as soon as possible. So those are great resources to leverage if you are just getting introduced. Uh, and then of course, there's tons of great training uh, provided by Circuit Stream as well. Um, Berenice has a great question. Is the voice feature provided by MRTK? Uh, or do we have to use a kind of third-party speech recognition or speech to text API? No. So the you know the the, the main two hand tracking, uh, so the main two two sensors that we talked about, uh, you know the hand tracking and the voice recognition, it is provided by MRTK. So you can just uh, use the um, you know for for a button you can just define what is the uh, what is the word that you want to uh, you want to hear. And it will automatically uh, capture that you know when you when you when you speak that, 
it will automatically capture that. It will trigger that button. So you don't need to use any other speech to text API. It is inbuilt to MRTK. Perfect. Perfect. That's, uh, that seems very, very convenient. Yeah. Awesome. Another, uh, another question from, uh, Bernice, um, concerning performance, how many different materials or shaders and how many instances of one material do you recommend using at the same time without dropping frames and what other things do we have to keep in mind, uh, concerning performance optimization? Great question. Yeah. So yeah, great question. So just imagine that you're building for a very low end Android device. Right. So basically, if you are if you are a Unity, maybe a moderate developer, you know, there's something called Unity Profiler. So they can, you know, while you're developing, you can check how your RAM is going to be, how your CPU usage and, you know, whatever, whatever the materials that you're going to use. And uh, based on that, you can kind of uh, kind of uh, come to a conclusion uh, that this is the limit that I can go. Right. Even even when you like run this in the HoloLens device, um, it will show a profiler, right? As, as you've seen in the editor window, it will show a profiler, uh, you know, uh, mentioning the CPU usage, the frame rate and everything. So that is why I said you have to iteratively develop, you know, in, in Unity, in the, the emulator and in the device. So you have to, you have to, you know, you have to get that uh, cycle going to see whether you are building in the optimum performance or the optimum, uh, you know, uh, using the optimum objects. And if, if in any case, if your, you know, if your application should use a lot of elements, a lot of rendering and stuff, that is why we have like Azure cloud services that you can, you know, directly uh, leverage them. Uh, you can do the, all the processing in the cloud and you can just stream whatever that you see uh, to the device itself. Perfect. Cool. Uh, and then another question from Berenice. Great questions today. Uh, what are the design patterns, gang of four, you use most in your Unity projects? Cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's more of a more of a programming question rather than a Unity question. So it's you know it's really going to help you out. So if you are if you are a fan of fan of programming and all these design patterns, uh, one of the one of the main design patterns that we are using here is Singleton, right? You know sometimes you um, uh, you want you want something to be in different, you know, multiple different scenes, right? And some objects that you have, you you need to have just one object that controls, uh, you know, one one instance of an object that controls the whole workflow. Uh, so design pattern, uh, so singleton pattern is one, and then we've been using uh, uh, factory design pattern. So you know, since we, in order to create like uh, same objects, but you know, in terms of Unity, they are providing their own design patterns, such as, uh, you know, uh, scriptable objects, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the the platform is yours. It's kind of a sandbox. You can define whatever the uh, the the standard design pattern in Unity as well. Okay, perfect, uh, Berenice. I hope that answers your questions and um, great questions today. I uh, also had one quick uh, one pop up here in the chat. I am not from a programming background, so how do I start scripting? That's a very good question, John. Um, what would be your answer for that one, Indica? Yeah, so scripting is not really hard, right? But if you if you want to learn about you know scripting in Unity, uh, Unity provides uh, their own um, uh, kind of you know, introductory projects, you know, it will, you know, which will give you a basic introduction to this, you know, all of this scripting, what are the, you know, how to, how to go about creating, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, how to go about creating the scripts, you know, the, the methods, the variables and stuff like that. But apart from that, circuit stream also provides the, um, uh, a C sharp course, right? Apart from that, you know, if you if you just go along with the uh, the circuit stream website, you can find a lot of resources that we are providing in terms of learning C sharp. You know, definitely lots of great resources out there on the internet. Um, and glad yeah. you alluded to our uh, our C sharp scripting fundamentals course. I mentioned our our kind of longer flagship courses, but we do also offer uh, short short form courses. So our C sharp scripting is three weeks long, uh, entirely focused on C sharp scripting within Unity. Uh, so that'd be a great place to take a look, uh, John, if you are you know interested in in expanding that and developing that skill, for sure. Great. Um, 
has your uh, has your project rendered? Is it is it ready to be shown again? Yeah, it took that eternity and uh, kind of like loaded the emulator. So let me share my screen and just give just take another couple of minutes of your time to show this. All right, there we go. So this is the Hololens emulator, right? So if you like open up, if you tap F2, it will open up the um, this, right? Which will, you know, by pressing F2, you can take it back to uh, to your scene. Now you can see that this resembles uh, whatever we uh, saw in uh, the uh, the Unity editor as well. You know, there we go. So if you if you look a little bit down, you can see this is the hand. You know, if you if you actually uh, uh, build this into your Hololens two device, you'll be able to see your hands, and using your hands, you'll be able to, you know, click these buttons. All right. For some reason, for some reason, it's giving me a hard time. So just to demonstrate, I already have a backup plan. I just recorded the same thing. So I'm just gonna play this. Um, and you know you can just take this uh, to to move your head around. Okay, so just like that, you can you can you can pin your menu by the side, right? Like this, and by you know clicking the uh, the steps, these buttons, you'll be able to visualize the workflow. Which is cool. Very cool. Cool. Right. So if you have the Hololens two device, just feel free to. Uh, so we'll be sharing you the, the the same project, you know, as a GitHub repository with with uh, with the files, assets, and everything. If you have a Hololens device, you just can you know uh, download the project, put it into Hololens, and maybe share a uh, share a video with us of how you experienced the whole project. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. And thanks for having that uh, that backup video. I know sometimes sometimes <laughs> it's not uh, not so easy to to transition there, but perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, anyone anyone have any other questions we can answer before we hop off here? I know it's uh, it's been a long workshop today, but I uh, appreciate everyone following along. Give it one sec. <laughs> And uh, and also, uh, Dan had mentioned about our uh, C sharp course being free with our larger courses as well. So definitely a great point uh, to to point out. Uh, any discounts for students? So um, basically, we offer alumni discounts uh, for students that have gone through our courses, John. Uh, and then right now we have a great set of bundles going on. Um, refer to any of the main course pages that uh, that Dayan has posted. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see some of the bundles available. And, and one of them right now has the C Sharp scripting fundamentals, as well as an Oculus Quest 2 device uh, that you'd get for free with the, the 10 week or the eight week course. Um, so yeah, just a great, uh, great, great place to get started. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, uh, really appreciate, and there it is, Dan with the save. Uh, really appreciate everyone's everyone's time today. Um, feel free to continue to follow along. We put out workshops regularly, uh, and we are looking to make them, you know, uh, available to accommodate different time zones as well. Um, so, really appreciate it again, Indica. Uh, do you have any any last uh, words? Anything you want to say? Well, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for joining and keeping up uh, with the whole. Uh, it's been around two hours. Thank you very much for joining uh, with us. And bye bye. <laughs> All right, everybody, take care. Uh, get ready for the replay to be in your uh, your mailbox. Everyone have a great uh, great day. <laughs> great day. Bye bye.